Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. In the past, on this channel, I've been showing you some tiny devices with touchscreens that are able to run Windows VST plugins. For example, this mini PC here, or a Raspberry Pi with a touchscreen. The problem with this is that many plugins from the early 2000s aren't optimized for touchscreens, so using them on a touchscreen is very fiddly indeed. Today, let's create our own touchscreen optimized user interfaces for any plugin you can think of using an open source software named OpenStage Control. And if you think that's interesting, please join me in this video. Here we go. I will show how to install and use this on Windows first and later we'll also look at Linux on the Raspberry Pi. As usual, I've posted all the links in this video's description. Okay. First, grab the latest version of OpenStage Control from their web page. Then, unzip the folder. If you want to, you can move it to your programs directory and add the OpenStage Control executable to the start menu. On Windows, we also need Loop MIDI, a small app that adds a virtual MIDI port to Windows. We will need this later to redirect the MIDI messages generated by OpenStage Control to your DAW. So, download and install this as well. Link is in this video's description. Add at least one virtual MIDI port before continuing. Now launch OpenStage Control. You might get a warning message, which can be ignored safely. First, press the three dots in the upper left corner and then list MIDI devices. Memorize the number of the Loop MIDI input and output port. Then enter the name you want to give to your virtual MIDI controller into the MIDI field followed by a colon and the two numbers you memorized separated by a comma. Here I'm naming my controller OpenStage Control and my input and output are numbered 1 and 2. Then press the play button in the upper left corner, allow network access if Windows is complaining and you should be presented with the UI editor. Here open the main menu again and start a new session. Then create a new tab by right clicking the main area and selecting add tab. On the right side in the inspector you can change the ID if you want to. Then open the context menu again and select the add widget and add fader options. We will set this element up to control filter cutoff frequency. Make sure the fader is selected by clicking it with the left mouse button once. In the inspector under geometry we can change the screen position and dimensions of this fader precisely. In the Faders Style tab, let's change the design to Round and the knob size to 40, which will make touchscreen operation much easier. In the Fader tab, change the maximum range to 127, which is the maximum value for MIDI controllers. In the OSC tab, enter slash control as the address. pre args here are the MIDI channel and the CC number in square brackets. For example, square bracket open, 1, comma, 3, square bracket closed. The target is MIDI followed by a colon and the number of your virtual MIDI controller. In this example, open stage control. We can now open a MIDI monitor, for example in a browser, and move the slider, and then you should see it sending MIDI events. Add a text field and a label to your fader, in this example, cutoff. We can now copy and paste the fader and just change its ID and CC number and label it resonance. Now open the main menu again and select Session and then Save. Specify a file name and press Enter. Let's use this setup with an older plugin now. Here's Synth1 running inside Reaper. I'm using Reaper because I know my way around, but any other DAW or VST host software that has a MIDI learning feature will work just as well. 
Click the options menu, then preferences, audio, MIDI devices. Make sure the loop MIDI device is activated for MIDI input here. Then add the Synth 1 plugin to a track. Move the filter frequency control, then press the param button and then learn. Now move one of the sliders in your touchscreen controller and then press OK. Repeat this for any other parameter you'd like to control this way. You'll see Synth 1's knobs moving around when you change the controls in Open Stage Control. Nice! Now let's add a button that triggers a note. In Open Stage Control, add a button, and in the OSC menu, set slash note as an address. In the pre field, enter the MIDI channel and the note number you want to trigger in square brackets. Also, at the target, which is the same as the one for the faders. In the button tab, change the mode to push. Now push the button to hear the note being played. You can now add as many elements and tabs as needed for your setup. Another interesting use case is putting this software on a microcontroller in headless mode. Your computer must be able to run the node.js web server for this kind of use. Here is a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is a fairly low-powered board. I've connected a USB expansion adapter here, into which I plug a cheap USB to 5-pin MIDI adapter. First step, install Node.js and npm, which is easily done by entering the command you see on screen now. After that, install Python's RTMIDI library. Download and unzip the headless version of OpenStage Control now. Once unzipped, change to its directory and enter node.js dot minus minus MIDI list to see a list of all the available MIDI devices. Press Ctrl C and then restart Node.js, this time giving it the name of your virtual controller, followed by the numbers of your MIDI input and output interfaces, in this example OSC colon 1,1. OSC will display its IP address and TCP port on the console now. You can enter that URL into your browser's address line or just use the QR code with your smartphone, which will lead you to the OSC editor we've already covered in this video before. Pressing Ctrl and E will leave the editor mode and let you use the touch controls without accidentally changing their layout. This enables you to control your MIDI hardware or software from anywhere within your local area network. For example, here I am in my garden controlling the filter cutoff frequency of my Novation Peak from afar. Admit it, that's the thing you needed in your life. Jokes aside, there are a lot of real-world uses for such a software and I'm looking forward to hear your suggestions and experiences in the comments of this video. Yeah, and that's it for today. Your own touch-optimized user interface for your favorite VST plugin using OpenStage Control. And if you think this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can join my Patreon, become a channel member using the button under this video, press the super thanks button, or buy some music on Bandcamp. But there's no pressure to do so. As always, Thanks for watching and see you again very very soon. Bye bye.